Hello and welcome to this edition of our Enterprise Development Seminar. We are going to be discussing a very important subject, which I have called Digital Cash Machine. So we'll look at how to achieve financial freedom by starting a technology-enabled business. This is something that I have done. Um, I started out full-time in 2016. Before then, I'd been learning, doing stuff on the side, but I started out full-time 2016. And between then and now, I have learned a lot. And I have grown in ways that actually exceeded my imagination. I have started companies. I have helped a lot of other people to start their companies, you know, and, um, you know, raised people that, interestingly, I was even at an event recently. I met someone that, you know, just participated in an internship program. And the young man went from NYSC to, you know, to managerial role, like directly like that you know, like directly, okay? So I'm just saying that the things that we have done that made this happen for us, these are the things we're going to be sharing in this series. And I make bold to tell you that if you practice everything, if you implement everything we're sharing, at the end of this series, you will find that, okay, you have actually started a technology enabled business and not just any kind of business but one that is actually going to be very profitable within a short space of time it's important that we learn how to make money like i have often said anyone that has as if money is not important is either sincerely ignorant or deliberately dishonest and the way to make money is to create value okay you create value for people by solving problems by meeting their needs and they exchange that for, I mean, you exchange that for money. They give you money in exchange, you know, for the value that you are creating for them. So why are we talking about building a technology-enabled business? There is a lot of focus on technology, but it's not about technology. It's about the problems you are solving with the technology. It's about what you are trying to achieve with the technology. However, one thing is important. In every dispensation, life is in dispensations. And in every dispensation, there is a direction towards which things are moving. Okay, there is a direction towards which opportunities are moving. There is a direction towards which funds are moving. So you have to be sensitive and deliberate. There was a time that it was the agricultural revolution. There was a time in the Stone Age that it was, you know, understand? There was a time that was the industrial revolution. Now it's about technology, especially artificial intelligence, but technology in general. So whatever you are doing, you are you you need to learn how to leverage technology or take advantage of technology to grow it. Okay, so you should have the mindset that whatever you are doing if you are running a business for example that business is a technology business okay or at least a technology enabled business you should either be running a technology business or a technology enabled business they are not the same they are not exactly the same tech business and tech enabled business are not exactly the same but whatever you are doing you should integrate technology into it so that you can scale and so that you can take advantage of the opportunities that come with this dispensation and that is what we're going to be covering um, in this series. Okay, so let's take our opening prayer, then we go right into the session. Dear God, I ask for an outpouring of your rain upon the business and career in which I have offered my work as an act of worship to you. By your spirit of wisdom and revelation, fill my mind with divinely inspired thoughts and strategies that will empower me for supernatural productivity and extraordinary success in all that I do. Open the heavens and grant me insights, concepts, and ideas that will place a clear distinction upon my work through the uniqueness of my products and services. In addition to this, Father, I ask for the reign of your favor upon every work I have ever rendered. I ask that this reign of favor will cause the voice of my work to be heard on the streets and in palaces, that men and kings will be drawn unto me, and by this my work generates great surplus. I ask that kings will hear of the excellent spirit your reign has produced in me, and they will open great doors and grant opportunities unto me. Okay, 
<laughs> now, these key ideas don't even come close to summarizing what we're going to share. So don't just run off with the key ideas and say, oh, I've got everything. Okay, there is more to, I, I, I'm trying to remember this proverb, but it's just like an iceberg. Okay, you see the tip of the iceberg, but there is a lot under it. Okay, if you see there is this proverb, I don't remember. If you know it, you can type in the chat if you're on the live, if you're on the live um, uh, meeting. And if you are uh, watching the recorded version, you can also put in the comments. There is this proverb that, um, okay, um, um, a particular organism or, you know, element or something that is dancing. When you see that particular element dancing on the ocean, okay, the drama is underneath. The drama is in the deep. <laughs> I don't know how to interpret it. I think it's a Yoruba proverb. But what I'm saying is pay attention, listen, and take notes, okay? Now, when many people want to start a business, the first thing they are thinking about is financial freedom. Now, even this uh, um, series, we're saying, okay, how to achieve financial freedom um, you know, through a technology-enabled business. But the truth of the matter is that the purpose of business is not to make money. Now, people make it look as if the purpose of business, in fact, you might have heard some experts tell you the purpose of being in business is to make profits, you know, and all of that. Those things sound nice, but they're not true. Now, you should not confuse purpose with outcomes. The purpose of business is not to make money. The purpose of business is to solve problems, is to help people, is to create innovative value, is to make life better for people, to improve their experience of life. Okay, so that is the purpose. Now, within all of that, you can now define the purpose for your own business. How is your business solving problems for people? How is it creating value? Then you now find out, okay, so how can I create value, solve problems, you know, help people, and then make money from it? That's what will later lead us to your business model. Okay, so your business model now explains how you solve those problems and make money. But money is not the purpose. Money is only an outcome. And like we said at the beginning, money is just means of exchange of value. You are creating value for people. You are helping them solve their problems and then they give you money in exchange. So it's important that we start with that. So why are you starting a business? Ask yourself that question. Actually write it down. Why am I starting a business? Very important. Okay. Because it's going to influence everything else that you do. And um, if the foundations are not in order, then everything else is going to crumble. If you are building a house or a structure, you know, and um, you, you can replace almost any part of the building. You can see a wall and so this wall is not okay. I'm breaking down and putting another wall. You can change the roof, okay? After a while, you can change the windows, you can change the doors, you can change a lot of things, but you can't change the foundation, except you want the, the whole building to come down. So that's why it's important that you start with why. Why exactly am I looking to start a business? There are people that want to start a business simply because they want to become their own boss. This my boss is too, this is too that. I want to become my own boss. Try it and see how easy it is. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, but the point is that is not a good enough reason to start your own business. I covered some of these reasons um, to start a business or not to start a business in my book, How to Start Your Own Business. And it's available for free. You can download it free of charge. And it's a book that you can easily read, you know, in a sitting. Okay, if you make up your mind to, I will share um, the download link uh, before the end of this session. Okay. So that's um, the first thing um, that I think you should pay attention to from what we have seen from my own experience and the experience of others. I can tell you that it's very important to be clear about your purpose. We're going to get there on the specifics of, okay, so how do you even find this out and all of that? Okay, then the second thing, a lot of experts will tell you that, oh, before you start a business, you need a business plan and all of that. You may be surprised that many of them don't even have the business plan for their own businesses. Then uh, look at the likes of Microsoft, look at you know the big companies that we know today. Did they really start with a plan? Facebook, this guy just, you know, uh, you know, he saw a need and he got together with um, I think a friend in his dorm, dorm room back then at the university, and Facebook was born. You understand? So these things you need to ask yourself questions. It's not everything that the experts say that you take hook, line, and sinker. There is wisdom in those things, and um, there are contexts in which they are valid, but it is not in every context. For example, you may not need a business plan when you are just getting started, okay? But you may need a business plan when you want to scale to certain levels, because there are some people that will not even partner with you if you don't have a business plan. But when you are just starting, there is a lot you don't know. It's more like you are just experimenting. That's actually what it is at the early stages. 
you are experimenting. You don't know what will work. You don't know what will not work. So having a very detailed business plan is even like, it's, it's, it's in a way, it's pride, okay? It's, it's like, okay, as if you are so sure of yourself. I don't know. Even the experts that are telling us to write business plans, they agree that the best of business plans is still a bundle of assumptions. And in the world that we live in today, it's a rapidly changing world. The assumptions change very quickly. Now look at uh, how... Uh, um, the um, COVID pandemic, look at how it changed a lot of things, for example. So if your business model had been designed in such a way that, okay, uh, 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 it's, not, it's not adaptable, okay, to this kind of new situation, then your business is gone. You understand? Okay, so if you are going to start a business, especially a technology-enabled business, technology keeps changing, okay? The technology that... Uh, would give you the resource you desired yesterday may no longer work tomorrow. You understand? So it's important that you have uh, you are you are nimble and you are flexible. You are not rigid. Okay. So it's not the business plan that is the first thing. Okay. The first thing is to have a compelling vision. Okay. A compelling vision. Where do you see yourself? What are you looking to achieve? What is your business going to look like years from now? A vision is a picture. Okay, a picture of okay the future you are looking at. Okay, this is what we're going to be. You are seeing your business the way it could be, not the way it is. You are seeing the impact your business is making, and then you capture that in a statement. You write the vision and you make it clean. You make it clear. Okay, so that anybody that reads it will understand that. Okay, I have an idea of what this business is about. That is very important because you are going to need to build a team as we go on, and your team. Your vision is one of the things that we attract them to you, that we attract your team members, and that we even help you because a lot of people, when they see your results, they want to associate with you. But your vision will show you who to accept, who to not accept. And in fact, your vision will even repel some people naturally. Do you understand? So it's very important. So you start with a compelling vision. And for me, what I usually you know, say in terms of vision is that it should be something that you know, kind of describes or it captures the energy of a situation that you are running away from or of a place you know that you are running away from and somewhere that you are running towards okay so you have a history that you don't want to repeat you have some problems you have experienced in your life or that you have seen around you and you want to solve those problems and then you have a future okay that you want to achieve so you are you you, you must have something that is either pulling you okay towards a desirable future towards a preferable future or something that is you know, pushing you, you know, away from, you know, uh, um, an undesirable past, okay? So that will help you as you think through your business vision. So now you need a business vision, a compelling business vision, and you also need the gumption. You need the gumption to pursue that vision. You know, you need that courage. You need that determination. You need to make up your mind, okay, that we are going to do this, okay? Okay, so you, you are focused and you are, you are, let me use the word obstinate, okay, about your vision. Now, when we say that, we don't mean that uh, you just keep saying, no, I must, no, no, no. What we're saying is you, you have a picture that you're looking at, but you are not rigid about the methods. You are not rigid about, oh, this is, you are not even rigid about your products and services, but you are rigid about what you are looking to achieve and you make up your mind that, yes, I'm going to achieve it, whether I find a way through, whether I find a way over, I'm going to explore everything. And the process of doing that, uh, Jim Rohn says that uh, when you go to work on your vision or your plan, not exact words, but that's what he's saying in essence, that when you go to work on your plan, your plan also goes to work on you. You understand? So you need to have that vision, you know, and then you go to work on it. So you don't need an elaborate business plan, something simple. Um, for those that are going to go further, I can share with you a one-page template, one page. Just you summarize everything in one page, and then that is easier to, you know, it helps you to clarify the details and then to run with it, okay? So that's it. So we, we've said a bit about the, uh, defining your business vision, uh, okay? Uh, so I'm not going to say much about it again. We can continue the discussion on our discussion platform. But I also talked about defining your DNA. So that's what describes you as a company. Who are you? Okay, what, what, what's the personality of your company? Look at your company as a person, okay? And what is the personality of that company? What is the character? of that company. How do you define these things? You define these things by looking at your vision, which we have spoken about earlier, then your mission. Your vision is where you are going. Your mission is the things you are doing every day to ensure that you get there, okay? And you also look at your core ideology. The core ideology is what do you really believe? 
Okay, what do you really believe? What, what, what are the beliefs that drive you? You can also have a set of core values, but at least you should start with those three, your vision, your mission, and your core ideology. Then you can also define core values. Now, for example, at the plenipotent company, our vision is building purpose-driven businesses that create material and spiritual prosperity. Now, each of those words, you can now go you know, into them and explain, but that's, that's the vision. We want to build purpose-driven businesses that create material and spiritual prosperity. Now, then our mission, now, when you are thinking of vision, mission, or you know, all of these details, sometimes people will tell you, oh, keep it short, keep it simple. Yes, it's good. But sometimes if you need to make it long to understand what you are saying and make people understand, it's okay. You can always revise, you know, the message is the same, but you can always revise the way you communicate it, but it has to be clear. It has to be something that inspires you and that moves you to action, okay? It is first for you, really. It's first for you before it is for, for um, the people. It's just like a farmer. A farmer enjoys his harvest first before he now sells, you know, to others. You understand? That's the way it is. So it has to be something that makes sense to you and that also connects with the people that you are looking to reach, okay? So um, I, I just shared our own example. Now, sometimes you can have more than one. You can have, yes, you know, that may be, that may sound like, uh, you know, uh, is this, you know, but you can have more than one, okay? What will now happen is that most of the time when you um, have something that cuts across a lot of jurisdictions or a lot of, you know, different kinds of um, target audience or target market or the people you are called to serve, they are in different categories. You can have different vision for each of them, different mission for each of them. And it could be at the end of the day, like the case of crude oil. You know, you have crude oil and then crude oil and now be separated into its various components. Okay, for example, at the plenipotent company, that is actually the kind of business that we are. Okay, the plenipotent company itself is a company that, okay, look at what I uh, just said about the vision, that the vision is, um, is to build purpose-driven businesses. We're building purpose-driven businesses that create material and spiritual prosperity. Okay, so that's the vision. Now, we're going to have different missions. At the end of the day, different businesses are coming out. It's already happening. Okay, business, businesses are coming out. Eventually, we're going to have at least 150 businesses. Okay, eventually, at least it can be more. Okay, but at least we're going to have that. Now, so those businesses, each of those businesses will have its own vision, we have its own mission, we have its own core ideology, all of them will be extracted from the, you know, primary vision of the plenipotent company. Do you understand? So I just want you to know that if at the beginning you seem to have like two or three vision statements and mission statements, the experts may tell you that it's not okay, but I'm telling you practically as someone that has done this and that has tried, you know, these things, I can tell you that it's okay. You understand? And for us, we have um, a, a two-sided mission, just like um, two sides of a coin. When you have a coin, the coin has two sides. So our mission at the Plenipotent Company, the first side is building a network of competent professionals that offer clients the quality and reliability of a large corporation while innovating with the ease and flexibility of a small business. Okay, that is the first part. And it came from my own experience really of um, seeing people, they, they have a need they want to meet, they have a problem they want to solve. And the kind of people, the kind of consultants that can solve those problems for them, you know, they are in the large corporations and these people that need the solution cannot afford those solutions, okay? Then the ones they can afford, the, 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 the solutions they can afford, those people offering those solutions will not give the kind of quality they expect. So they are torn in between, you know, two, uh, you understand that situation. You don't have the money to engage the kind of people that will really give you what you want and then the money you have you know the people you can engage they will not do the job well so how can we solve that problem you understand so that was how it started so the the uh, it started from a desire to mitigate helplessness to make sure that people can get the help that they need even if they cannot afford it okay so eventually we summarized it as expert help within which that's the summarized version expert help within which so you can get the expert help that you need and it is within your reach you understand okay so that is what the, the the mission, okay, the first side of the mission looks like. And that's why we have a lot of interventions. For example, if you want to um, um, engage us on a particular project and um, maybe you cannot afford it because of the kind of resources we're going to put into it and all of that, we can give you a free training. You know, we have stuff like that where we train you for free and then you do it yourself. So we have different models 
to help us ensure that we achieve these things. And that's what your vision and your mission will do for you. They will help you to clarify exactly what you are doing and be sure that you are indeed serving the people you want to serve. You are not just um, you know, full of activities, okay? Okay, now, so the second side of our mission is raising generations of entrepreneurial leaders that create innovative solutions to context-specific problems, okay? Raising generations of entrepreneurial leaders that create innovative solutions to context-specific problems. That's the second side of the mission. Now, our core ideology, we approach our work, or you can call that your business philosophy, okay? So we approach our work as a sublime act of service that provides opportunities to maximize our potentials while preferring solutions and creating value. So whatever we do, whatever business we eventually go into, whatever products and services that we do, those things can change. Our products and services can change. A lot of things can change. But this vision, mission, and core ideology, they will continue to guide us. You understand? We can refine the wording. We can make it easier to understand and all of that. But at the core, those statements describe who we are as a company. Do you understand? So it's very important that you think through these things will not come in one day. They will not happen, you know, uh, all of a sudden. Uh, for example, in our own case, okay, we started by, okay, um, I had a picture, okay, and then I painted that picture in words. Okay, then um, people that have interacted with the company, those that have been part of our training programs, our clients, friends, and all of that. So we now summarized, you know, I spoke with team members, okay, what, what do you think this company is really about? And each person gave, you know, what they felt the company was about and all of that. And then we summarized those those um, um, feedback, all of that feedback, and we put it in a short survey. I'm going to share the link with you so that you can see and adapt. I'm not saying you should copy, adapt to understand, okay? Because your business is different. Okay, so we now shared that and um, people responded and we found out, okay, so we're able to validate what we, because it's one thing to think of yourself in a certain way is another thing for the people you are dealing with to see you that same way. So if you see that there is a discrepancy between what you are saying about yourself and what people are saying about you, then you know you have more work to do. Or if what you are saying about yourself is what, you know, every, there, is a, there is overwhelming evidence in that direction, then you know that you are on the right track. Now, uh, one of the mistakes many people make when they are starting a business also is to remain solopreneur for too long. You can't build a business alone. You need a team, okay? When you are just starting, you may not have the money to employ people and all of that, but you can build a team through a lot of ways. I'm going to share two right now. One of them is apprenticeship and i'm going to call it two-way apprenticeship that means you are an apprentice somewhere you are learning from somebody you are learning from a system you are learning from an organization so you can you can have an agreement now you, are, you shouldn't use your um, um employer's resources to build your own business no but if you're an apprentice somewhere and they are not paying you you can have an agreement or maybe they're just giving you a statement you can have an agreement to use their resources to use their wisdom their knowledge their tools you have that agreement you understand to use that to build your own business also you understand so there are certain things that you do for them as an apprentice and then you also now get to leverage on the collective wisdom and experience of their team you understand and the resources of their team to build your business but it has to be a clear agreement you understand that's what we do at the plant protein company for example everybody is expected i have my own personal business for example everybody is expected to have their own personal business you know their companies are saying no you cannot no no we wanted to change that that's one of the things we're doing so every we expect you to have your own business so it's not something you are doing underground like ah, i don't want my boss to know it's interesting we don't even have bosses okay i don't want people to know do what's and all of that's okay so you is not we you, you understand what we're saying okay so but not every company is like that. So you need to have the agreement that, okay, so that's apprenticeship, you're an apprentice somewhere, and then you have the agreement. Then the second side, that's why I said two-way apprenticeship, is that you also now have an apprenticeship program. You have an apprenticeship program, you can call it internship, you can call it apprenticeship, you can call it uh, um, um, entry-level you know, program. You, know, you create something like that, and you bring people in, you train them. It's using what you have to get what you want. You have some knowledge, you have some experience, you have a system that you have built, and then you can help others you know, with that. So after a while, after you know, a while you, you've been in this for a while, and you know that you have things that others want to learn from, okay, then you can create that kind of system. And that's one of the ways. Then another way to build a team is through partnership. 
Okay, when we started the plenipotent company, for example, uh, we actually didn't even start as, as the plenipotent company. We started as Philip Amiola Business Support. Okay, and that's part of what I was saying when I, I, I was saying that um, you should teach the business plan. You know that the first stage is like you are experimenting. Okay, so you are experimenting, so you're, nothing is cast in stone. So at that point, I did not even register a business name. I was using my name, Philip Amiola Business Support, because sometimes when you think of all of these things, oh, I want to register a business name. Okay, I need to open a bank account. And sometimes those things can even get you overwhelmed, especially if you're in a situation of life where you are dealing with a lot at that period. Okay, I said, okay, let me use my name. If I use my name, you know, there are companies all over the world that is people's needs. <laughs> Even, you know, there are companies, if uh, PwC is some people's names, Price Waterhouse Coopers, you know, is some people's names, Mercedes Benz is, is uh, somebody's name. So you, you understand. So, but eventually, don't use your name because, like, eventually, I mean, the long term, because sometimes just that name might make some people feel like, oh, is this, you know, the people have sentiments that they don't even know about. And at the core, we are emotional beings. Human beings are emotional creatures. We're not logical creatures. So there are some people that is just your name. They say, what kind of name is that? In fact, even me, I've done it before. I had the name of the school and I said, what kind of name is that? I can't send my to this kind of school. And it doesn't matter what kind of quality they have. But that, what's that name? You understand? So your name, you can start with that, okay, when you're in the experimental phase. It's like um, a farmer that wants to, you know, you want to start a plantation or you want to start a farm. You don't, usually you don't go, you know, depending on what you are doing, but most of the time you don't go and plant your seed in the field like that. No, you plant your seed in the nursery, okay? You plant your seed in the nursery. You now transplant the seedling to the field. You know, get that picture in your mind. You can write it down. You plant your seed in the nursery first, okay, under a, a controlled environment. And that's one of the benefits of apprenticeship too. When you are apprenticing in a place or you are learning in a place, you know, it provides that controlled em environment. So it's more like um, you are using their own reality as your laboratory. And that's what we do for our team members, for those in our internship program, our graduate apprenticeship program and all of that. And even our core team members, that's what we do. So it's our own reality. The business is our own reality, but we allow them to use the business as their own laboratory. You understand? So that is the mindset. So Philip Amiola business support was the laboratory. Okay, it was the it was the um, um, nursery or the laboratory. Okay, where we nurtured the idea before we now took it out. Okay, to the field or to the market, as the case may be, and now started a limited liability company, which out of that company, other companies are now beginning to come out. Do you understand? Okay, so uh, so um, build a team, yes, and eventually you get to the point where you are recruiting. We'll cover that as we go on in this series, like real recruitment, you know, building a team that will drive the vision long term and all of that. Okay, short term and long term. Okay, then uh, you should also register a domain name. You know, we're talking about building a technology enabled business. So your domain name is your identity in the online space. Okay, we're going to cover the details of this in subsequent sessions, and we're also going to sit down and implement these things during our enterprise uh, development workshop. Okay, so uh, and that's what the workshop does. The, the, the workshop is a practical is a practical uh, session, and we can now customize all of these things we're sharing to each person's experience because your business is different. You know, your vision is different. So how do you customize that? That's when we sit down. Usually it's a two-day uh, uh, workshop, usually. And when it's not two days, it's usually a full day. Okay, so we have time to sit down. You know, you, 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 you have accommodation. You can stay overnight, you know, and all of that. And then we work all of these things out. We give each person, you know, individual attention during the workshops. I want to encourage you to um, um, sign up. You see the link to sign up so that we can inform you when the next edition is coming up. Okay, so these are just um, some things um, to take note of. Okay, we are going to continue the discussion on our discussion platform. So ensure that you join the discussion platform if you are not there already. That's our business mastery club. Okay, and if you have any questions, if you're on the live call, you can type in the chat right now. Excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. Or you can use the link provided to ask your questions. But better still, you can ask those questions in the discussion platform. But if you are watching the recorded version, just use the link provided, okay, uh, to ask your questions. Or simply join the join Business Mastery Club, okay, so that you can ask your questions right there. Okay, so these are some other resources that you can take advantage of. I talked about um, the visual clarification tool earlier. What we did 
okay, when we were trying to clarify, okay, what exactly is our vision in this company? What is our mission? You can adopt it or adapt it for your own use. So take advantage of all of these resources. Okay, the course to think about this week. The first one is from Philip Amiola, that's me. Okay, cash cannot substitute for cancel or instruction and money will never solve a wisdom problem. At best, it will only be a band-aid solution to a much deeper issue. It may temporarily alleviate the pain, but it will ultimately worsen the situation. Think about that. Think about it. Whether you want to start a business or whatever it is you want to do, people talk about money a lot. Money is important, but it cannot substitute for cancel and instruction. It is, you know, cancel wisdom instruction. They are far more important than money. Okay. Then we have this from Steve Jobs. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. That courage there is what I was talking about earlier when I said you need to have gumption, okay? So I'm going to read that again. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. Thank you very much. Let's take our closing prayer. I declare with full assurance of faith that I have a rich, satisfying, and overflowing life. By the grace and mercy of God, I have received wisdom and power to build up vast assets that have continued to generate an abundance of wealth in profits, equity, retainers, consulting fees, dividends, interest, royalty, rental income, residual income, rebates, grants, gifts, annuity, capital gains, and other forms of income. My wealth and riches have continued to increase and multiply exceedingly so much that accounting for them is like counting the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. I daily present my business and career as an altar of sacrifice to God. Therefore, he has blessed the work of my hands, causing me to implement insights and ideas that have made me so successful that nations come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. I have become very great and extremely distinguished in every way. Amen. Okay, amen just means you are saying, okay, let it be so. You understand it's not a religious uh, language okay thank you very much everyone remember we have these sessions every tuesday okay so invite your friends to join us and um, they can always get the, the platforms may change but they can always get the latest information on business mastery club okay so just um, join business mastery club so that you if you're not there already so that you can always uh, get updates and um, you can also ask questions you can take advantage of other opportunities and other resources to help you implement the things we're sharing in these um, sessions and to customize the implementation to your own unique context. Okay, thank you very much and bye for now.